Welcome to another episode of V for Veganism. I am here with George Basil. Mm -hmm. Uh, what a fortuitous name for a vegan. Right. Star of Crashing, Wrecked, and Flaked. Cooler, man, what's going on? My landlord wants thousands of dollars from me or I'm out on my ass. Isn't that what you owe in rent for the last six months? Come on, man. You sound just like him. Before we get into the shows that you're on, I want to ask you the question that I ask everyone. How did you find your way to veganism? Um, cool. It took a little while for me. I was... Um, Raised in Baltimore, like a heavy Greek family, not heavy. Like, heavy Greek. Yeah, they were all heavy Greek. <laughs> um, but I was, I was kind of one of those kids that played a lot of video games, and at some point was just eating too much. I guess I don't know what, but I was big, and I was always big. And it's just like a strange place to be developmentally because you're trying to make relationships and figure things out. And I always felt sort of out of shape. Around 19 years old, I moved to Austin, Texas, and that was the first place that I'd ever been where the alternatives were there. So you could walk up and buy like a Frito pie, and but then there was the same exact Frito pie, but it was a veggie Frito pie, so it had like wheat roast and all this other stuff in it rather than like cut up pigs. And I tried it and I was like, this shit's pretty good. <laughs> and so then, that's where I started experimenting with it, like the idea of it. The, the influence came from like losing a massive amount of weight. So I was like 270, 280 pounds at 19. And right now, I'm at 170 pounds and that's where my body stays. Like it doesn't, yeah. it's reached its homeostatic point where it'll go up or down five pounds, but that's it. And so it kind of started from that, like vanity. Like I lost weight and I was like, yeah. Uh, slowly it evolved from just a way to lose weight to everything else started falling into place. Like the ethics and everything else behind it became just as much a part, if not more important than like a diet, you know, yeah. it became the only logical thing. When we met, we met on the set of Crashing, mm. and I had actually overheard the props lady saying, I, I don't wanna give anything away, but you were supposed to be drinking goat's milk. Mm -hmm. And I heard the props woman say, well, it's almond milk for him. And that just like piqued my interest. I was like, is he? I yeah. didn't, and I was like, I don't know if he's like just lactose intolerant, or right. so I like, you know, wanted to find out more. Um, so do you find now that uh, that productions are more accommodating of your lifestyle and your, your choices? Yeah, totally. Um, they kind of have to be. And you don't ever want to be the dick that's like, hey, you kind of have to be. But <laughs> they do and they know yeah. it and that's all good. And it's not a big pain in the ass anymore. I think it's, um, it's understood that people have certain requirements and lines that they don't want to cross for themselves like uh, I'd love I think and I think we talked about this that day I'd love to be that guy that's just like uh, you need me to wear a leather jacket you have to make that leather jacket out of artificial like out of synthetics I'm not gonna do a, a real leather jacket mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know I'm not there yet or I don't know if I ever will be it seems too diva -ish. I think there there comes a point where you can you know if you're Brad Pitt you can, right. you can be like you're gonna make me a new chair. Yeah. I'm not sitting in that. <laughs> but to make to make that like y we've taken that personal responsibility, right? And we've taken that that angle on ethics. But if I have to make a human being's life harder by being like, now you got to do this, I don't know if I'll do it. I mean, I might, you know, I'd like to. It'll be case by case, I guess. And you talk to the person, and you're kind of like, hey, would you mind? Or is it a huge deal? Does it make your job harder yeah. if I need this out of your work and you know you hope not but when it comes to food like you're saying yeah fuck that I'm not gonna drink goat's milk I'm not gonna yeah. drink cow's milk I'm not gonna drink I'll drink human milk or almond milk <laughs> I would do that I was feeding something in Vancouver and I had to uh, eat they wanted me to eat cereal and so I was like yeah sure I'll sit there and I'll eat cereal during the scene but you know, just have soy milk, almond milk, whatever. 
and they did, but then they changed it last minute to spaghetti. And they were like, we're gonna bring you spaghetti and meatballs instead. And I was like, uh, you can, yeah. but I'm not gonna eat it. Yeah. I mean, I'll, th I'll, like, I'll toss it around and I'll make it look like, but it's never gonna go in my mouth. And they, you know, they weren't okay with that and I wasn't okay with that and then yeah. it just didn't happen. So. They didn't do the spaghetti and meatballs? Uh, or they were they, like, you're fired? They did it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they kicked me off set. So, uh, no, they did, they did it with like sauce and then, but you could see that that was an uncomfortable scramble. Like you could see that they were just like, oh, do we hide the meatballs in it? Or like what? It's like, man, I don't, yeah. you're not gonna. Yeah, so there are like fake meatballs out yeah, there. Yeah, you know? just like a little, a little effort yeah. might have might have helped it, but. Get your blood hanky out of my face. What's wrong with you? Now look. How's I supposed to know that that old doe had a family? You ask her! Damn it, you ask the deer if he's got a family! There's this moment in Flaked that I love that I don't think a non-vegan would pick up on, where you go to the refrigerator, you're gonna make, like, your new girlfriend's little girl you're gonna make her breakfast all right. and you go to the refrigerator and you're looking through and there's like eggs and all this other stuff and you're like nope there's nothing in there <laughs> and then your shirt says like where's the tofu and I was like his character is vegan too <laughs> that's awesome yeah who's um like who whose idea was that was that did you go to the writers and you were like make my no. character vegan <laughs> no they like uh, uh they did make him vegan because uh, I guess it was it just came out in the way that they wrote him, that he's like a vegan Venice bro. Yeah. I don't know if I had any influence on it or not, but gag of trying to make that little girl breakfast and looking through a full fridge, to them is funny because it's just this guy that has no idea how to like cook anything, probably. Because he's just looking at like all this breakfast food and then he's like, meh, nope, sorry kid. Gotcha. Um, but that is like a way better. I definitely interpreted it yeah. that there were like I eggs like and other things that he didn't want to like, make no. her. So he was like, no, nope, there's no food in there. That's, that's how I took it. But that's I'm, way better. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that was my biased brain and how I interpreted I that. I like that way better. <laughs> Your character does wind up being vegan also in, yeah. in Crashing. Uh -huh. Who is this guy? How did you even meet this guy? We work together. He's the art teacher. You've met him before. He's not even a comedian. Not everything is about being funny. He's a really talented artist. Oh, I'm sure he's great. They give all the master artists third grade. What's your medium? Hand turkeys? His name is Leaf, which is also kind of perfect. Basil playing did, Leaf, yeah. yeah. Did, so was that, did they always know your character was gonna be vegan again? Or, because he, he does have this like hippie kind of mm. like, you know, one with the earth kind of vibe, um, but we don't find out until second season that he is vegan. Yeah, um, but he's an opportunistic vegan, which is funny. He's like one of the, and I live with folks like this in Austin. They call themselves freegans. Freegans? Yeah, they're like Christian, they were Krishna conscious folks, which is cool. I don't know anything about that then. I don't even know what that means. I don't know anything <laughs> about it now. Uh, I didn't do any research on that, yeah. but Krishna conscious is like, you know, the, the Hare Krishna group and stuff, okay. um, spiritually, but they're vegan, I think, like, culturally, that, that is their, their thing, which is badass. Um, but these kids, they were a couple, and they would, like, come home, and freegans will eat anything that has been found uh, gotcha. at no cost, mm -hmm. in other words. But then when you are making your own food, then you're vegan in every way. So, and that's what, kind of like what Leaf was saying in that scene from the second season yeah. where it's like, I'm vegan unless. I was gonna yeah. ask you, you know, your, your co-stars, do they either, do they have these, have they adopted them themselves or have you influenced them at all to kind of make changes in their lives? Like Pete and then also, yeah. Um, Lauren, Will Arnett and other right. people. And yeah, every star I work with um, just watches me and then does whatever I do. <laughs> and they want to be me. <laughs> they wish 
They could be as young and as handsome <laughs> and as well clothed. Be dudes, like we're all dudes here. Well put, Cooler. Thank you. Uh, Pete is already on his own thing for a long time. Cool. And he's got uh, a great understanding of, you know, how to how to like nourish himself without weird shit. Um, Will was one time we talked about it. <laughs> I just remember being like, good for you. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Uh, He's like, I didn't eat meat today. Good for you. <laughs> uh, but I think in general, like people are taking more and more, uh, they're taking it more seriously and they're, mm -hmm. and they're considering it a little bit more and like the arguments that we were talking about earlier, like the, the standard cliched arguments about like whether it's protein or whether it's like what about the plants they have feelings too and, and people really saying some dumb shit uh, it's less and less and my only problem with it still is that the only time I have a vegan conversation or anything involving my eating habits or the differences in eating habits is during a meal and that's heartbreaking because it's yeah. like you're at a, a new girlfriend's house or a buddy's house with family and like, you know, you're already being not criticized, but there's a little bit of scrutiny and, you know, they're, they're trying to, everyone's trying to hang out and be normal and then you're not. Yeah, there's sort of this like elephant that yeah. always exists. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. there doesn't have to be like, set a table. I'm not going to eat the dead shit. Don't worry about it. You eat it <laughs> if you want. Yeah. And so that's my only rage. Yeah, I'm sure you did like indie projects, but yeah. um, didn't really get it. Like, do you have any memories of really awful experiences of like, you just had to do something that you really didn't want to do, but there was like no way out? Indie stuff I've done forever. I'll still do forever. And it's like, the best and in my, in my world indie stuff is just like little college humor funny or die videos or anytime a friend asks me to come and do whatever it's the best and, but uh, yeah sometimes they don't necessarily have uh, the budget for like a coconut yogurt remember that first kiss video that came out years and years ago <laughs> but I was in a like a parody of that oh, okay the on uh, college humor uh, sketch and everybody was like just mowing down on these different sandwiches. The joke was that it's a first sandwich instead of a first kiss. I have to eat the whole thing? It's gonna take a little while. I'm not even close to finishing this. And then on that day, I took a big old bite of not just a meaty sandwich, but like a grocery store disgusting. I mean, I think I pushed it back into the bread to oh, like just to not have to just eat the bread. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I didn't want to ruin everything. Mm -hmm. uh, that was pretty insane. Totally. I, I can't believe we did that. What the fuck is this? You know, sometimes you'll be on a set where it's literally just a prop. Yeah. So no one's supposed to be eating it and it's just like a spread of cheese. It's just going to go slowly bad yeah. and toss. Yeah, I'm like, why, you, that could all be, you know, almond or whatever. It does yeah. not have to be real and, you know, an animal didn't have to suffer for Dude. that. For no yeah. good reason. So uh, you do projects in L.A., obviously. Mm -hmm. Do you notice a difference between productions in L.A. and productions here in terms of understanding veganism and healthy living yeah not really I think they're both great like we're we're in a business where we're surrounded by creative people mm -hmm. that are usually pretty radical and like they get it and a lot of them also have alternative eating habits and stuff so I also don't rely on people or productions that much like when I travel man I bring my shit. Yeah. I, I'm always, I have a bag and it's full of my, my nuts, my, <laughs> it's got my nuts in it. <laughs> All my bags got my nuts in it. <laughs> and I give my nuts out. 
to anybody that wants them. I guess I have noticed a difference when the star of the show is vegan, for sure. Because when that's the case, um, they definitely have vegan food or whatever, you know, his or her uh, requirement is. Mm -hmm. And so that's great. That's always a pleasant surprise. Because, yeah, otherwise it is like I'm picking through this little salad and it's rice and beans and I'll just yeah. have some of the rice and beans. Uh, if I'm working at home, LA that is, since I don't have a kitchen here, um, I will cook my food and I'll take it to set. And it doesn't matter if it's a big budget production that has like really elaborate catering and all that shit. Like I'd rather eat my own food over anybody else's, yeah. period. Mm -hmm. Like I don't care. Even fancy vegan restaurants where you can go and spend a lot of money, that's great, but <laughs> my shit tastes good. It really does. <laughs> I'll pull that shit out of my garden and I will eat it and I will feel amazing and I will like, it tastes great and I don't, you know, it just, it didn't pass through a dozen other people's hands and like yeah. get all goosed. It's just. Do you have a backyard with like, yeah, that's, oh, that's our problem. You know, I have, yeah. I have no space for a garden. I know. <laughs> Over there. It's just. So. <laughs> You can grow so much food. I have two 12-foot beds that it's like, you look at it and it's, you know, like the size of that bed or something and then another one next to it. And it doesn't look like that much, but then when it's like busting with all kinds of different, you know, tomatoes and carrots and kales, you're eating forever. You're eating yeah. for like months and months and you have too much. And so... I'm like giving it away and it feels great. I have a nine-year-old little girl and there's a, there's like a very natural, like mega function to picking something out of the garden in the backyard and handing it to her, whether it's like a little strawberry or like a sugar snap pea or whatever and just watching her be like, and chew it up and like, love it and just be like that's a great strawberry or that's so delicious there's nothing like it there is no it's it's all like direct connection it feels yeah. so pure and awesome so has she been vegan her whole life no she's when she we share custody yeah her mom and i and her mom is a vegetarian uh -huh. and so when she's with me she's vegan um, and when she's with her mom, she's vegetarian. And there, that's difficult too, because like that kid gets all of these fatty treats and all of these like fatty rewards, whether it's cheese on broccoli or whether it's real milk, um, ice cream and mm -hmm. shit like that. And then when she's with me and I take her to the pizza shop, it's like, yeah, you can have one of these pizzas, one of these two. The, the vegan ones, like, yeah. and she's like, fuck, <laughs> I don't want those. I'm a kid and I want the cheese pizza and occasionally I'm like, okay, do it. Like, I'm not gonna talk about animal suffering because she knows. Yeah. I'm not gonna make sure and like wag a finger because she knows and if she wants to get there on her own at some point, I'll be there and I'll help. But, you know, until then, I can't really administer my choices fully on her. Mm -hmm. the, the eating animals thing, that's not even a question. That's like, right. that's a joke. She's completely, in, in no way ever been confused about like why we don't eat animals. And that was one of the coolest parts about having a kid was like explaining it and talking to her about it and her just being yeah. like, it's the most irrational thing in the world to her to think of these animals that are like in books, they're personified as these like fun characters, you know, like cows and pigs and chickens all talk and they all like are buds and they, you know, help each other do fun shit. Uh, so eating them makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, which was fun. That was a cool discovery. Thank you so much, George, for doing this with us. We really appreciate you taking your time out and uh, talking with us. 
Um, please make sure to check out Crashing and check out Wrecked and check out, check out Flaked um, on HBO and Netflix. And uh, please make sure to subscribe below and you'll get all the updates for all of our videos and we'll catch you next time. <laughs> I never know like the last thing to say. Like, <laughs> just do, just do strange, like <laughs> strange slow peace line.